it was the Brazilian show tonight. Martinelli turned on the show. Jesus turned on the show. It was the Brazilian show tonight. And for me, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Now, Martinelli, this is Martinelli's first goal in Champions League. So his first game in the Champions League, his first goal. He scored in his first game in the Premier League. He also scored his first goal in that cup game. So this is it that Martinelli is gone and smashing records as usual. This is our star Brazilian. Our star Brazilian. You know, every team, every big team has a star Brazilian. Apart from Man United and others. Well, they can count Fred, in it? Fred is their star Brazilian. But you know Real Madrid, yeah? They've got R9. They've got Roberto Carlos. You know, Barcelona got the great Ronaldinho. Yeah. And you know, Arsenal has got Gabby Martinelli. He's still only 21, 22. So he's got, I'm telling you, this guy's going to be, but his potential, his potential Ballon d'Or is cut from that cloth. He's cut from that material. And I've been saying that, listen, you see, when it comes down to the next two years' time, I'm not even going to say next year, I'll give him two years' time. Next two years' time, I'm telling you, about four to five players from our squad are going to be nominees for the Ballon d'Or. It's going to be Saka, Martinelli, uh, um, perhaps Odegaard. Sometimes I wonder about him, and I'll get into why. There's going to be William Saliba. I'm telling you, Julian Timber. Don't forget Julian Timber, Declan Rice. Oh, my days. Right now, I'm happy with the team. I'm happy. We it's, it's, it, it, when when it came down to the to the end of the match, it was a bit shaky, but overall, I enjoyed it. I had a blast watching this match. It was kind of a drag in the first few couple. Um, I would say first fifteen minutes. It was we tried, but there was no success. But going on to after the first half, then we starting to get into. We starting to get more and more into the game, and then we starting to turn on the fireworks, man. And I enjoyed it. So it's experience, and thankfully, youth overpowered experience it was a brilliant performance by us because you see in in Sevilla's team they're mostly older guys they're older guys yeah and this is it that it's a difficult and a tricky place to go to Sevilla very difficult and tricky to go there and get the win get a draw Real Madrid couldn't pick up the three points yeah so kudos to us kudos to us I'm saying I'm happy with the win I predicted a 3-1 win but a 2-1 win um, I think Masada predicted 2-1 but I'm still happy with a 2-1 victory for me I am happy with this yes we could have played better yes there's a lot to improve on however it's the overall result because I'm saying that if they're drawn with a team like Real Madrid giving them a brilliant match and when you look into it they didn't have much chances uh, uh, barring the end of the game when they're starting to basically throw the chick uh, the kitchen sink apart from those moments they didn't have much in the match they did have a few chances but not like an overwhelming like beating against the uh, uh, our defense vehemently it wasn't like that it wasn't a game like that so for me i was happy with how we played could have played better as what i said but man that's how it goes sometimes sometimes Going away in the in the European fixture, especially in Champions League, it can be very difficult and and tricky trip trip today. Experienced guys, yeah, they've especially one in particular, Sergio Ramos. Sergio Ramos, you see, he tried to do his dark arts thing. He tried. You remember what he done to Salah, yeah? Tried to injure Salah in those final final moments when he used to play for Real Madrid, basically pulling down, and letting him fall on his hand, and basically injured, yeah, and came off. He tried to do something like that to us. Not in the same way. But this guy, he never fails to amaze me the way he plays dirty. He, and it's it's, it's the thing that I, I don't like dirty players. But the way Ramos does it and he always gets away with it. It's like, it's astonishing. I, I can't believe it. So what? first of all, yeah. First of all, if we can remember. It, when he went, when, um, he, st he stamped on Tamios' toes. When, and the thing is that, I think it was a throw in our corner. So basically, they dr he drifted to the back post and Tommy was mocking him. So the referee was looking one way. Everyone was focusing one way. This guy pull, pull, pull away and take time in his, uh, in, in his peripheral views looking at Tommy and stamp on his toes. <laughs> I'm saying that. Like, there was no need for that. There was no need for that because the ball wasn't coming to him. It's not like he's trying to get a lead on Tommy Asu. It's like he's, he's trying to get you uncomfortable. He's trying to get you feeling, do you know what I mean, timid. That's how he plays. He bullies people. And I'm saying, I love that guy. Honestly, I love Ramos, but I just don't like playing against my team. And I, once again, I don't like dirty players, but Ramos, there's something about him. Now, also, when Havertz came on, he went in for a header. And this guy went in with, with, with a header 
and at the same time he flicked I see, I see him intentionally he didn't flick he didn't use his arms he didn't use his arms he used his fingers he flicked like that i'm thinking nah we saw when others went down most uh, um, the referee thought that he was having him on and um, the fans were like creating excitement think, thinking that others was wasting time but in that replay i saw the flick of the risk i saw that because in defending sometimes i i, I in my old team i used to defend and this is the coach sometimes say that basically you need to be a bit dirty let stamp your authority as a defender let the players know that you're there let the attackers be scared let them know you're there so straight off the bat i understood exactly what he tried to do oh man Sergio so he tried the dark arts but uh, i'm telling you thankfully none of our players got injured by Sergio Ramos. we see um jesus coming off here and he also scored a brilliant goal and i'm saying that jesus needs to improve his shot accuracy he needs to improve um so much he needs to improve in terms of going forward because I believe that he's very he's very gifted but since he got injured last season when he since he came back from injury he had a few glimpses a few brilliant glimpses but it's not he's not been consistent like he was before he got injured before he got injured every everyone was terrorized everyone was scared of of, of jesus the best attacker i've played against this season which was the season he got injured before he got injured it was um um, um jesus because he was terrorizing defense he was leaning back in people controlling the ball swift and turning dropping the shoulder he was doing everything and after he came out from injury i'm saying that this is not the same jesus it's like we got a counterfeit i'm telling you this is not the same jesus however i see him trying to improve he's trying to get better he's trying to play harder he's trying to play faster he's trying to play more aggressive and this is what happens he get injured but hopefully he'll be back at a man of the match performance for me he's, he was the man of the match martinelli was in contention but i have to give it to tammy also tammy also had a brilliant from the first minute and he attacked very well as well he was good attacking and did you see the spaces he picked up it was it's like he was playing Xhaka's role and declan rice sits so Tammy also for me, he can play everywhere because he, those four substitution part and once again I have to big up our Teta substitution. They came on time. I was saying that um Odegaard need to come off. Odegaard came off for the right person. I wanted Havertz to come on for that for that um aerial ability in the in the final third um to stretch the pitch more. Um and also he brought on Trossard, which was very good as well, because Odegaard needed to come off. Odegaard needed to come off. I don't know what's going on Odegaard, but Partey switched the ball done an accurate pass to Tommy Asu. You see the position Tommy Asu was in. It was right beside Havertz. He was playing um, that attacking, left attacking mid roll. Yeah, that Xhaka plays sometimes when Xhaka drift there, he added the ball to Havertz. Havertz pass it on to Martinelli and it's a goal. He played absolutely brilliant. He, he took up about five different positions. It was sometimes I see, see him in, in, in centre back because one of the chances Sevilla had is Tommy Osu's pressure while the guy missed it. So he, at times I see him covering centre back. He's playing left back. I, I see him playing left centre mid. Yeah, I see him playing at left attacking mid. I see him playing forward. This guy, I see him playing left wing. He played everywhere and this is why i had to give him the, and he played very well he didn't give away the ball much he played everywhere and he done it well so i'm saying that yes we have duran timber but we don't we can't forget tamias because right now tamias's form is reminiscent of when he just broke up broke onto the scene if we all remember when tamias came onto the scene he was one of the sickest defender we're always singing his praises that listen where did we find this guy how come none of the big teams tried to sign him because it was he was so good well, I say big team and I say big team over chess because Tottenham tried to sign him and he turned him down. So I say big team for a reason. Yeah, big team. I don't talk about small fries like Totti. You get me? Because I was critical of him in the last two video. Well, critical of him in the first half. But in the second half, it was immense. This match, you see that. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. And when I see him play today, I'm thinking, is it the fact? Is it a thing whereas... He's intentionally not attacking most of, well, some of the times because he's trying to get into the match without being kicked because we tried to hack him down. Most teams try to kick him, kick him. So I think I've, I'm trying, starting to think different reasons why he started so slow against Chelsea and why he started so fast against this team because we see that their left back, he loves to attack. Yeah. So this opens the door for Saka to go forward on their wing. And they weren't doubling in the first half, they weren't really doubling up. But in the second half, I see them starting to double up more because they start to see that he's he's on form. Yeah? He, he's ready for the match. So I have to big up Saka. He had a good game today. He didn't score, didn't assist, but 
he done the basics and he done it well and also he was very good at helping ben white defending one of the re i was critical of him against chelsea because i didn't think that he, he, he defended well he didn't attack well and he didn't defend well but in this match he wasn't attacking perfectly but i can see that he tried his best to defend and i have to give my star boy credit for that he scored the first goal which was a brilliant goal but if you can remember he, he could he, he should have scored the first time the first uh, he had a chance in the eighth in the eighth minute he should have scored that because for me the, he, he should have had more composure i don't want to be overcritical, but we have to highlight these things because if sevilla had a last minute goal we'll be thinking about that chance right that he should have scored that so even though we won i'm still going to be a bit critical about it not over critical but a bit critical because i believe that he should have done better with that chance now the keeper went open his leg yes it was a good save by the keeper but you see if he had been composed enough you could have went around the keeper on the left hand side or slide it through the keeper's legs right that's the first thing however i have to give him credit because he learned from that and the reason i said is because his goal you see that he had time and sometimes when players have time they get confused they get nervous and do something dumb but martinelli he took the time to go around the keeper and slot it in that's confidence that's composure and that's what i wanted him to do for the first one at least have enough try doing a fake shot for the first goal for the first um chance he had try doing a fake shot and then cut cut to your left and then shoot just try to do something do you know what i mean so this is a martin is that it needs to learn the tricks of the trade i see like sometimes gabriel j be doing chops doing cutbacks do it for no reason sometimes martin really need to do that do that at the right time do that in front of the keeper chop him let him slide over one side then you go that's what jesus is good at so he needs to start adapting the the good things with the players around him the things that the other players are good around him do he needs to start adapting that to his game and then he can be even a better player because i believe that he has the potential to rival thierry Henry. he has the potential in terms of goal scoring he has the potential to rival christian Ronaldo in the Premier League I believe that he has that potential but he just needs to add that, that just that bit more to his game to reach that level but my Brazilian had a wonderful game today is it the weather is it because of the weather is it because of the weather why we started so good today and then I saw the rain and I'm thinking mm, well the rain against Chelsea was a bit heavier so perhaps it was because the rain was heavier but I'm saying there's no excuse you're a professional footballer mate we should be playing better against Chelsea but anyways we started well, but Odegaard, I have to go to Odegaard now, right? Now, I don't know what's going on with Odegaard. He's not the same Odegaard. I don't know if someone died in his family. I don't know if his missus is angry with him. I don't know if his children don't... I don't know what's going on now. I don't even know if he's married. I don't even know if he's had kids, but I don't know what's going on. He's just playing different. It's not the same Odegaard. If we remember last season coming into this, the early parts of this season, Odegaard used to be dropping shoulders. Like for no reason, just dropping shoulders there, dropping shoulders there. Dro he just looks, he just looks exciting. He looks enticing. He looks, he just looks like an entree. But in this match, he, not just in this match, for the four, past four matches or five matches, he just looks die, dead. He looks dry. He looks bored. He just looks like he's not interested to me. That's how he looks. And I remember Odegaard back in the days, he just turning twisting and turning twisting and turning like just twisting and turning drawing fouls twisting and turning drawing fouls he didn't do nothing today and you see that from Mikel Arteta had to take off his captain in the 70th minute now some would say that it's because he wanted to go more aggressive he wanted to go more defensive but Odegaard I was saying that listen he needs to come off at the same time Arteta took him off once again big up to my manager the best manager in the world soon and um, for his inspiring substitution once again, because they came and solidify the game. Even though we conceded one, we still didn't lose. We still didn't draw. So for me, overall, it's a benefit. But Odegaard needs to pull his finger out because we're going to need him. We're going to need him going on to going into deeper into the running. We're going to need him because he's our captain. He's our most creative player from midfield. So we're going to need him, right? So hopefully he gets back to where he was at the beginning of the season and the end of last season because we need that other god that's the other god we need right now much another one another one how many times am i going to be saying this how many times am i going to be saying that declan rice is having a superb match he's having a up he's having a good one i'm going to be saying that in every single i can't see me the only times i'll be criticizing De declan rice is if he's playing for injury and if he's playing for an injury, man, come on. I can't be that overcritical of him.
But Declan Rice, he had a brilliant match, clamping down everything, cleaning up everything, attacking, driving. And this is the Declan Rice I've been missing from. The same one that I see in West Ham, driving from midfield, bringing his team forward. He'd done that about three to four times for us and I loved it. Unfortunately, it didn't lead to anything, but that's not his fault. It's just the attacker's fault. Saka, at one, t one point, after he got the ball, run into the defender, lost it. Martinelli, same thing. Gabriel J, same thing. Enketia, same thing. So it's not his fault. Yeah, he tried. He'd done his job to bring it. He made a challenge, bring it from midfield to the attackers. One slight criticism, if I could. If I could. Just one slight criticism. He needs to improve his final ball. Now, if you can remember in the first half, he ran, he got to the byline and he crossed, he tried to cut back, but he didn't have his head up. If he had his head up, he could see that he could roll it straight across the sucker and that would have been an easy goal because Saka was free. The guy was behind Saka, right? Saka would have got there before the defender that was marking him because he peeled off the defender and he was through on goal, but he tried to cut it back because it's just instinctively to cut back. He didn't even look up. So if just one thing I have to, because that's what Xhaka was playing last season and Xhaka was having lots of success because he was cutting back at the right time, he was crossing in the box at the right time, he was having shots at the right time, he was having runs at the right time, scoring goals. So Xhaka perfected that position last season. I know Declan Rice is going to need time, but that's all I see you need to improve because everything else and his shot you need to improve his shots taking more shots I heard him said that he watched the, the the David Beckham documentary and Beckham said he need, um, the more you shoot the more you're going to score that's why he had the shot and I think that he needs to start applying that in every single match having some shots man just test the keeper test the keeper you never know what might go in if you don't shoot you don't score that's what I keep saying if we don't shoot we're not going to have shots on target. If we don't have shots on target, we're not going to score. That's just the life of the game. That's how the world works, man. That's how football works. You need to have shots on goal to score. Now, come down to Raya. Raya, 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 Raya. I don't know. I don't know. But Arteta said he's not nervous. He's not, um, he's not this, he's not that. But for me, Raya looks a mess. He looks like a hot mess. I don't know, man. I've been defending Raya, saying that I'm going to wait till January, but I don't think I can wait till January, to be honest. I need, I need to see Ramsdale again, just to compare. If, I'm not saying that to kick him out of the team forever. I just want to compare again. Because, to be honest, I forgot our Ramsdale. Because Raya's been so bad, I forgot all the mistakes that Ramsdale made because Raya has been so bad so please bring back Ramsdale in the team let's see how he gets on if he's improved because that's why one of the things Arteta bring Raya in as a competition to improve the other player how are you going to know if the other player well he, he should know because he sees him in training but we need to see him in a match situation to see how he copes with it because Raya is very good under pressure right but he's not been showing it for us this season he's not he's under pressure I can see he's under pressure because the fans won't back Ramsdale and you can tell that something is getting to him because the passes he's making, it's just clear that it's not on and he keeps doing it. But one thing I have to give him credit for, even though he keeps failing, he keeps failing, he keeps failing, he keeps trying, he keeps trying. He's not going to stop trying. And that's one thing I have to give him credit for. Even though he's messing up, even though he's doing it, for me, his confidence is low. It keeps on going on. So that's the video there and there, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Help me on my journey to 100 subs. Help me. Just smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. And this is it. That, And this is the thing that when you press the like button, it helps the algorithm. It helps me to get suggested to other people. So just hit the like button, guys. Catch you in the next video. Goodbye.